Christ in a dream, where each man, regardless of station, on this night can now be redeemed, where every man, regardless of his station, ancestral relations, on this night the past can fly away, and that dream we dream most, that every child is held close, on this night that dream won't be betrayed.
people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken, as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. And what has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. to light our Advent candles. We gather to celebrate the birth of the one who is the light of the world, the Prince of Peace, home to the homeless, refuge for the wary. We have acknowledged that the world needs the love, peace, joy, and hope of Jesus Christ now more than ever. We 
have lit these candles again and remember how we have waited on love, and love has never let us down. Please be seated. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Man, it is so fun to see all of you. You know, Christmas is always such a magical time at Columbine United Church. I think it's because it's like a homecoming. It's a reunion. Uh, some of you have come from all across the United States to come back to Columbine United Church. It is so fun to have people like the Bruner family who I haven't seen. In. Debbie, you don't look any older than when I saw you 20 years ago. You look great. You look, your husband, however, is a, there you go. But that's the fun, that's the magic of Christmas, is people coming together, friends and family coming together. And we hope that in this service, we can capture some of this magic for you. So we're actually going to start your Christmas celebration tonight. Hey, before we, want to, before we begin, I just want to thank a few people. I want to thank Mitch Samu, all of the, your work that you've done tonight. Let's give Mitch a... Our band, so the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, you started with two songs of the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. You're going to repeat the concert that you did a couple weeks ago this coming Saturday night at 7 o'clock. This place was packed. Who is here for that Trans-Siberian? Applause if you thought it was one of the most amazing things. That was incredible. So we want you to come. I want to thank uh, the Hiskey family sitting out there at the soundboard for all their work. They are the ones who actually make us sound good and all the staff of Columbine United Church. You know, one of the, uh, the great special things about tonight, it's part of the magic tonight, uh, when we planned this, we've been planning this service since about June, I said, Mitch, is there any way that we could get the guys to come back? And so it is very excited, and my great honor to have the most unlikely trio.
stars are brightly shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Only the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and his soul fell.
Let us pray. Let me God, for the beauty of this magical night. We give you so much thanks. The reunion of families and friends from, from near and far coming together to worship. But the true magic of this night is the birth of your son, Jesus. His love, his grace, his forgiveness, his mercy, it, it changed our lives for it pointed us to you. His disciples went out and taught everybody about, about the magic of his life. And might we truly continue that magic, that message that changes people's hearts and changes people's lives. Through this service tonight, oh God, fill us with your spirit so that when we light those, those candlelights and sing Silent Night, we feel the fire of your spirit burning within us. A flame that your son taught. A flame that has burned for centuries. And as we say the prayer that, that he taught us, might we feel our hearts aglow. Let us say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God. Amen. Before I uh, invite the, before the band starts in and the offered, um, ushers come in to receive the offertory, I just want to tell you that our offering tonight is going to take care of homeless teens in our community. We have over 2,000 homeless teens in the southwest Jefferson County area. So. Part of your offering is going to go to take care of those teens, to get them food and clothing and shelter. The other part is going to go to our own teenagers here at Columbine United Church as we send them, prepare to send them down on a mission trip down to Arizona. So I encourage you to give generously tonight to the young people in this church in our community. Will the ushers please come forward?
want to stop and just give a huge welcome to all the virtual members here at Columbine United Church. Many of you don't know that you can uh, connect with us on YouTube, and several people around the United States, and some of you even on the other side of the pond over throughout Europe, tune in and watch us here on, uh, at Columbine United Church. I want to give a huge shout out to a few of our service members overseas who are going to be watching us uh, uh, virtually um, Christmas Eve here at Columbine United Church. I just want to give a huge welcome to all of you. Let's thank these folks for joining us tonight. Very cool. Thank you. And now listen to the Christmas stories. It comes to us from Luke's Gospel, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that the whole world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Surely we should go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And let us uh, enjoy singing a cornucopia of carols. We'll sit, sit and sing the first, and then we'll stand for the joy to the world.
Please be seated. Give yourself a round of applause. That was beautiful. And Mitch Samuel, it's always Christmas when I hear those chimes. Thank you very, very much. Well, you know, this is uh, when I, I, I give you my Christmas message. You know, usually I try to find an uplifting message to give. But, you know, I've been doing this, uh, Justin told me, 31 times. I keep on trying to think of new and creative ways to, to tell you about the birth of Christ. But this time, you know, it's going to be kind of serious. Because I need to tell you about the Christmas demon. The Christmas theme. Uh oh. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we're usually talking about positive, hopeful things. Like, you know, I, I need to talk to you about a Christ, the Christmas demon. Because, you know, the Christmas demon, it's a pretty, uh, a pretty serious thing. <laughs> it's a great picture, isn't it? <sighs> Poor guy. It's kind of how I feel. It's like. Okay, God does not want this sermon. <laughs> Talk among yourselves while I figure out what else to say. Uh, actually, is, this, is it going to warm back? There it is. Very good. Yay for technology. I'm going to say more about this, this monitor. But sometimes I, I, I'm afraid I'm going to feel like this by the end of this, that I might ruin someone's Christmas talking about the Christmas demon. Because, you know, the Christmas demon, we don't... <laughs> We don't often talk about, you know, the dark shadow side of Christmas. How many of you have ever seen Bad Santa? Yeah, don't, don't ever watch it with your kids. But, you know, it kind of captures that bad side, the dark side of Christmas. In fact, you know, really the only, the only part of Christmas that kind of gets close to talking about the Christmas demon, you know, is, is the popular, you know, uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You know, and, and I just love How the Grinch Stole Christmas. In fact, I'm a mean one. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. And, you know, and, and I wanted to uh, sing this, but, you know, I had to give my voice a rest. And, and so Mitch said, you know, really, Steve, we should have somebody else sing this for you. I would not, he said, I don't want to hurt your feelings or anything. So he said, he said, what do you, what do you think if Eric sang it for you? And I said, and I said, well, okay. But then, and then when he started singing and he forgot the English words. <laughs> I, I thought, wow, he forgot it. But he has agreed to sing. There you go. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana with a greasy black peel. <laughs> You're a foul one, Mr. Grinch. You're a nasty, wasty skunk. Your heart is full of unwashed socks. Your soul is full of gunk, Mr. Grinch. The three words that best describe you are as follows, and I quote, stink, stank, Tunk. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. At least you remembered the English words for this. Silly. You well, you put it up on the. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I do really well. But you know, the, the, but even uh, the Grinch doesn't work because you know when 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 the Grinch hears the Fahu Vore, see I could have sung that right Fahu Vore da 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 da. Well, the Grinch, even the Grinch changes, you know, and his heart grows three three times bigger, and so he doesn't even work for the Christmas demon. But the Christmas demon needs to be addressed and needs to be dealt with, you know, and because the Christmas demon has a name, her name is Shirley. 
I know, I know. But seriously, that's the Christmas name is named. Surely, except, you know, it's like, sh- like with horns. <laughs> and the Christmas demon is so real that I, I tried to find kind of the right picture that would help you understand exactly who Shirley is. So help me if you think, is this a better one? <laughs> no, what about that one? You know, oh, that one's kind of close to the Christmas demon. That one for the older set, all right, older guys, and then... Oh, okay, that's works, that works. But you know, I've kind of decided on, on Miss Manners. Miss Manners best represents Shirley the Christmas demon because, you know, Shirley the Christmas demon is always very polite and always she never raises her voice. Shirley is always just a very simple whisper in, in your ear. She's all throughout the scripture. She's mentioned over 900 times throughout the Bible. And she's still alive in the middle of our lives. Like, let me show you how Shirley is still working in the middle of of your lives. Because you see, Shirley is the demon of I'm not responsible. Shirley is the demon of, you know what, I I have my own life. Shirley is the demon that says, you know, I'm too busy. Shirley says, you know, someone else can do this, not me. Like, like, think about this. Think about this. Let's say you have a cough. <coughs> and, but you know what? And you've been thinking that maybe you should go to the doctor, you know, because you don't want to go to work and you don't want to infect everybody. But Shirley says, oh, Shirley, you don't want to miss the Christmas party. Everybody's had their flu shot. You're not going to infect anybody. You go ahead. It's okay if they get sick. Shirley, you don't want to miss the Christmas party. Shirley says again, <coughs> Shirley says again, Whap. there we go. You might have a, a loved one, a friend, family member, a sibling that you haven't talked to in a long time, four or five years, and it's Christmas. And you think, maybe, maybe I should pick up the phone and, and call them. Maybe I should just kind of go a little bit out of my way. But then Shirley, Shirley speaks up. And Shirley says, you don't need to know that. Because surely they know how much you love them. Why should you have to go out of the way? Surely don't they know that the phone works both ways? And if they really cared, they would pick up the phone and call you. See, Shirley is kind of sly. It's like, you know, when you're driving home late at night, you know, and you see a car in the ditch, and you think, wow, should I pull over and help them? And, and Shirley, right, when you, when you think, maybe I should pull over, Shirley speaks up and goes, oh, surely not. Surely not. I mean, look, at you're dressed for the Christmas party. Surely there'll be coming, somebody coming right behind you. Why should you get out of the car? Because you know what? They were probably driving too fast. And they deserve to be in the bank. You just drive on. See, Shirley is, is kind of sneaky. And Shirley can even be deadly. Uh, this is not my son, but it is like my son. My son doesn't even know I'm going to tell this story, so just be quiet. Sit right there. Uh, this afternoon, my son Kyle, who works uh, mountain rescue for the I-70 quarter. What's it called? Alpine, Alpine Rescue Team. He was called out yesterday afternoon at 4.30 to rescue a a young man who was um, trying to hike up St. Mary's Glacier. And he told me a story that he and the rest of the three of his rescue team were out there in a howling blizzard. The sun went down, and they were trying to ski up St. Mary's Glacier to to rescue this person. Temperatures plummeted down to uh, five degrees below zero. They couldn't see anything. And he said that right in the middle of that, that a voice kind of came in and, and said something like, surely, surely people won't hold us accountable if we turn back and, and they won't blame us for that guy's death. Because, you know, it's getting kind of cold and it's getting very cold and surely people won't mind. And Shirley says, of course not. Why risk your life? That guy was kind of stupid. He got himself in this fix. He made his own bed. Let him lay in it. 
But to my son's credit, it has nothing to do with his father, of course. <gasps> Kyle and his buddies pushed on. And a young man is celebrating Christmas Eve with his family because he didn't listen to the Christmas demon. I'm very proud of it. <laughs> See, Shirley was even present there on Christmas night with those shepherds. When the, when the angels came to the shepherds on the hillside, and they, and they told them the good news, and that there was a baby that was going to be born, there was a baby that was going to be born, and they needed to go see this baby, and the angels left, and the shepherds turned to one another, and one of them said, surely we should go down and see what it is that has happened. And right then and there, surely, took on human form, look at this picture, and Shirley lit a cigarette and said, Oh, surely we don't need to go down. It's cold down there. We have all the sheep to take care of. Surely we shouldn't be doing this. And so the shepherds almost stayed. Now here's what's interesting. This is the second time I preached this. At the, second, at the 2 o'clock service, maybe it was too early. There's nothing worse than being the preacher and looking around and seeing, ain't nobody getting what I'm saying. <laughs> and I began to realize they're not understanding the Shirley thing at all. So let me help you. Let me help you. Oops. Oh, don't give away. I'm doing a play on words. It's always better if you have to tell what the sermon is about or tell what the joke is about. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Surely we should go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So get that, surely? See the play on words? So if you see something from the 2 o'clock, please explain to him what I was talking about. <laughs> Here's where this sermon hit me. Um, it's about this monitor. So when we did this in the round, and I know for some of you, you know, this will kind of be a gauge for you. You kind of walk in and you kind of go, wow, this is new. No, we did this back in April. Oh. I'm just joking. We did this just a few months ago. But we did this in the round. Uh, we needed a new monitor. And the Mulvaney said, um, we'll donate the monitor. And, the re and they wanted it to be, uh, you know, be anonymous. But I said, no, let's, let's make it... it um, a celebration of Damien's brother, who, when he was at the age of 19, was swept out to sea in the Australian Navy on an, in a Navy exercise. And these uh, seven boys, young men, 19, were in boats that were 20 feet long, and they was part of their sailing, their expedition. And I had to do some research around the accident that happened. And, uh, and all seven of them died. All seven of them died. Peter, Mul Peter Mulvaney being one of them. And in the and in the um, evaluation reports that were done afterwards, they tried to figure out how this could happen. And, and the, bo the boat went right between two islands. And so they interviewed people on the islands, and a, and a guy was hiking. And he saw, he saw the boat overturned with three of the guys sitting on top of it. And so th the Navy said, well, why didn't you report it? He said, He said, surely somebody else will report it. And when I read that, I almost started crying. Because that boat was found with those three boys dead underneath it. And that's when it hit me. How often do we do this? How often do we set aside and postpone our life don't accept responsibility for things that, that require sacrifice on our part. You know, we have one life to live. And we postpone our one life, thinking that we've got to have a million more Christmases left to come. We postpone this serious part of reaching out to friends and family, making people feel connected. You know, we, we have gifts, we have dreams, we have hopes, 
aspirations that someday I'm going to write that book. Someday I'm going to write that piece of music. Someday I'm going to travel to this country. Someday, because surely, surely someday. That's the demon. It's also why God did not leave us abandoned. You ready for another wordplay? Because God created an angel to do battle with Shirley. The God created an angel, the most powerful angel. We always think about Gabriel and Michael as being the most powerful angels. They're not. The most powerful angel is the angel haste. Haste. And they went with haste. Isn't that a groaner? <laughs> and the shepherds went with haste. And we always think that, well, what do you mean? They just, no, 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 no. That's not it. The shepherds went with haste. You just think they ran. No. When Luke says they went with haste, it was like this, because haste is a little bit like Larry the Cable Guy <laughs> with wings. <laughs> and, and Larry the Cable Guy, you know what Larry the Cable Guy's uh, you know, saying is, right? Get her done. Okay, practice that with me. Say it again. Get her done. Yeah, some of you are looking at me like, who is Larry the Cable Guy? You need to get out more. You need to be a little bit more redneck. <laughs> See, I believe so much in, in, in the angel haste and get her done that I believe that, because it's about getting on with life, and haste is about getting on with life, that I actually think that we should get rid of Merry Christmas. We've been saying Merry Christmas for a couple thousand years, and really it's just kind of a nice platitude. Hi, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, hi the Merry Christmas. Merry. What if instead we said Merry Christmas, we said get her done. <laughs> get her done. Someone comes up to you and says Merry Christmas, you say get her done. Get her done. Get, her done. <laughs> get on with your life, baby, get on with your life. Because you know when the shepherds were up there, <laughs> you know when haste heard, that, that, that Shirley was up there because they said, surely we should go down. And Shirley said, no, here, have a cigarette. Sit back down. <laughs> he said, no. And haste got up. You see, and that's why this is Mitch's picture of haste. <laughs> haste is like a motorcycle angel. And haste grabbed those shepherds by the collar took their shepherd crooks and started getting them going down to that stable, grabbed a hold of those shepherds and knocked their heads together and put them down in that manger, said, look at the baby. <laughs> you look at that baby. Now you go tell the good news. Get her done. Get her done. So the shepherds, they went out and they were spreading the good news, looking for haste. See, and for me, this is a, there it is, they went with haste. For some of you who did not know this, Mitch said, you might need to put that in there because I ain't going to get it. So they went with haste and found Mary. So, okay, everybody on the same page? You got it? All right. So again, tell the two o'clock crowd because they did not, right here they were like, what is he saying? All right. Because you see, they're like the little, Angel and the devil sitting on your shoulder. And you know, as funny as that is, it's real. Because you do think you have a string of Christmases in front of you. You think you have a string of years in front of you to accomplish your dreams, to accomplish your purpose to fulfill the greatness that God has for you, the reason why you were sent into the planet. And every time you think, I'm going to do it, surely, I have plenty of time. Surely. And that's when you need to hear haste say, Okay, that was kind of lame. <laughs> That's when you need to hear haste say, yeah. 
So when any time anybody says to you, Merry Christmas, <laughs> what are you going to say? Yes, Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas. Yes, Amen.
perfect. Here is the key. You know, it's one of the highlights of Christmas. There's lighting candles and singing Silent Night. So we ask you to be careful with the flame. All of the firefighters in the church get nervous with this. What we ask you to do is to take your candle and to dip it into the lit candle and pass the flame. The light of Christ, the magic of Christmas. And Charlie just snuffed my Christmas out. Snuffed my Christmas magic right out. And let's sing. I pray you'll be our eyes and watch us where we go and help us to be wise in times when we don't know Lead us 
us to a place Guide us with your grace To a place where we'll be safe La luce che tu dai I pray you will find your light Nel cuore resterà and hold it in our hearts A che When stars go out each night L'eterna stella sei ah, Nella mia preghiera Let this be our breath Quanta fede Shadows fill our day. Lead us to a place. Guide us with your grace. Give us faith so we'll be saved. Soniamo un mondo senza più. Violenza, un mondo di giustizia e di speranza, con il e la mano al sole vicino, simbolo di pace, di fraternità. Another soul to love. Let this be our prayer. Let this be our prayer. Just like every child. Just like every child needs to find a place. Guide us with your grace. Give us faith so we'll be safe. E la fede che hai acceso in noi. Sento che ci candles, the light. 
What a magical night. I just have one thing to say. Surely, you'll remember tonight. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Join us out in the narthex for a time of fellowship. Give me some. Let's thank our soloist tonight for a beautiful job. It was awesome.